Amadura, señores, que a veces me da la cura de tu Hi everybody, welcome to Dance Papi, your source for Latin percussion instruction. My name is Edgardo Cambon and I'm proud to be a part of this video series. Uh, today we're going to be covering this instrument that I have in my hand, uh, in my hands, which is the maracas. Maracas. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the instrument. Maracas come from many different countries in Latin America. Uh, I probably can say with all due respect that I guess the best maraqueros in the world, they come from Cuba, Puerto Rico, Venezuela, and Colombia. But there is great players of this instrument in many places. But those are countries that the maracas are ingrained in their folklore music. So there is a lot of great players in, in, and different styles of maracas. Um, I'm going to tell you that in Venezuela, there are maracas made out of small little calabasas. They are used in the joropo. Um, they are faster type of maracas. Today, right here, in front of you, I'm going to be focusing on the two main, well, and, and these two simple kinds of maracas that I have in front of me. One is uh, made out of plastic, uh, and the other ones are made out of uh, cowhide and sewn with fishing string, and they put this handle. In the inside, many times they put pebbles or stones or seeds of uh, trees. These ones I haven't been able to figure out exactly what they have in the inside. The ones that I have here are made in Colombia and these ones are made in Thailand and they're made out of plastic. So you don't need to get started with the most expensive maraca. They can range anywhere between you know, 15 bucks to 100. Uh, so I'm gonna get you going with the, these maracas which are the maracas that are usually used in salsa, salsa music or Afro-Cuban music. Uh, the maracas were king on the song music out of the island of Cuba. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is that this string is not necessarily necessary. I think it's uh, something that they put to hold it against the music stand and hang it in there because when the maraca ends up on the floor on the stage, uh, it's got a short life because somebody's going to step on it. And once they step on it, it's very easy, very hard to recreate this shape. Uh, there are tricks about it. But uh, it's very hard to fix this once it gets bumped. So, uh, but the, the, the length is okay because it doesn't bother you because you should be playing the maracas in front of you. So you're not going to be doing this kind of stuff unless you're juggling with them. So, the first thing I want to tell you is about the grip uh, on the maracas. The grip on the maracas, if I put the maracas on top of a table, I'm just going to put my <clears throat> four fingers under it and the thumb right here at the edge of the maraca. What I don't want to be is holding the maracas in this position, uh, like, you know, somebody in a birthday party goes, yeah, let's, you know, let's have fun, because this gives me no control on the instrument. So I need to think about this instrument. And just because I play a little bit of drums or timbales, I offer up a grip that I will have on a timbal stick or on a drum set stick where my index and my thumb are holding the maraca at the edge of the beginning of the cuero or leather and that's going to give me the control that I want to have. The first thing I'm going to tell you about the maracas or second thing is that the maracas sound when you stop them and that's a very almost borderline ironical comment but people grab these, the maracas and they move too much. So you need to understand that in order to make this instrument work, the movements need to be sharp. Therefore, the instrument sounds when you stop it. You throw the maraca to the front, but you quickly stop it. If you make the motions long, you're not going to be able to hang, right? So let's go right into playing basic eighth notes. For me, as a right-handed player, I'm going to put my Maraca. I'm going to start this rhythm playing eight notes with my left hand. So I'm going to go like this. One and two and three. Eight notes. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And, and two and As I play this, I want to tell you a few things. 
half your maracas in a little bit of a under 90 degree in your elbow. Don't choke it up on top of your chest. You're gonna need to be here comfortable, right? You need to feel the seeds inside the maraca hitting the wall of the maraca. And you're gonna feel that by stopping the maraca. Slower. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Very slow. Two and three and four. One, two and three and four. One. Use a metronome. If you feel up strokes, you feel the seats hitting the top. Don't worry about that. It's a part of the group, so let it happen. But your focus is going to be in stopping the maraca in front of you. Where am I going to be stopping it? Kind of like umbilical cord level. My belly. Like that. Right? Now, can I play more straight? Well, different people have different techniques and different approach. This gravity technique is the one that works for me. Uh, I'm also using these three fingers. Right? Two, when I throw the maraca, relax the wrist and stop the handle against the back of my hand. So, I don't exaggerate. It's not this, but the maraca can be stiff. Otherwise, you're working with forearm and that's a larger mass of body that if you relax the wrist. So relax the wrist, use the wrist. I'm gonna go sideways for a second here. Here you can see that motion of me bouncing this. But it's not an exaggeration. The grip needs to stay there. A comment that I could have made when we started with this is that there is a seam here, right? And some people like to, almost like in baseball, you know, feel before you're gonna throw that ball for that curve. You know, you want to feel that grab, that grab there. So, so you know, if you want to use that as a reference when you hold your maraca, also I should tell you that some maracas have a more of a definition between a lower sound and a little higher sound. Let's hear this from a great manufacturer in Colombia. Let's hear it. They are very balanced. I almost don't hear a low and high. But when there is a low and high, sometimes slightly, by way of changing the amount of seeds in the maraca then or changing the material slightly when i hear a difference i prefer to put the low pitch on my starting hand just a note just in case you pick up a pair of maracas and you go but this don't sound the same so this it sounds to me very close so i'm not going to worry about that so let's go back to the eighth note pattern one and two and three a little faster one and two and three and four and You got that nice lockdown beat. Excellent. So let's move on. I'm going to teach you a basic uh, feel to it or additional to it. Um, this one, at first, I'm going to do it once in every bar. And I'm going to do a double with my right hand. And that's the reason why I put the down beat on the left. So the right hand ends up with that double. Theoretically, your right hand is going to be your best hand. So you're going to be doing it or your most use, useful hand. Uh, but you can flip it around. You can try your own, your own version of this. So I'm going to put a double on the right hand right after one. And it's going to sound like this. One and two and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, 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 four, one. How to get that double? Let's work on it very slowly. And so that's gonna be left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left. 
obviously when we're talking about those doubles, you start, you need to relax really that wrist, right? And that's why we were talking about that relaxation and having a good grip of the maracas. Because if I would have done, you know, the party style, as I said before, you know, birthday party, uh, you know, party treat, treats with the maraca, and I would have had this kind of grip, I would have, I wouldn't have been able to do that double. Because I have no control. So, so this allows me to have that control. Let's go over it again. One, two, three, four, one. One and a two. So my count on that is one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and one. Two, three and four and one. With this, you're ready to play along with any boleros you heard. Notice that now my left hand is kind of teasing around the right hand a little bit. I'm not linear. I'm just letting it go a little bit like one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Tanto tiempo disfrutamos de este amor. Sabor a mi bolero, right? Go and grab any of the beautiful boleros of Armando Manzanero and have fun playing the maracas. Now, I'm going to put that double twice in the measure. So we were doing this. Two, three, four. One and a two and three and four. And one and a two and three. And now... One and a two and three and a four and one and two and three. So the tagadata that you hear on the maraca is formed by we have a downbeat here, down tagata ta. So the closing of that last note is my left hand again because it's beat two. One and a two. So, mistake is to think that that ta ta comes from one hand, and people end up doing this, all with one hand. So, that's a combination of the double on this hand and closing it on the second, on the next beat with this hand. So, if I count one and two and three and listen, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now, I'm going to try something on camera. Don't try this at home. I'm going to try stopping my left hand and continue the beat on this one. One, two, three. I don't know how good that works. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one. I have the coordination done. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Let's speed this puppy up. We're gonna go now into song. So let's, let's go to, now I'm changing the style, don't get confused with this, I'm, I'll tell you in a minute, now it's a different style, this is Cuban son older style, but I'm going to go to a speed like uh, Amargura, señores, que a veces me da La cura resulta más mala que la enfermedad Amargura, señores, que a veces me da La cura resulta más mala que la enfermedad So I was singing for you La Cura, Frankie Ruiz, Big Hit, right? Just for you to get an idea of Puerto Rican middle tempo guaracha feel on the maraca. 
Now, that double is put in different places. Different people put it in different places. Some people put it in one, some people, for me, the one that works the best is to put it right after one and right after three if I want to put it twice. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Okay, what did I just do? Double on both hands. Double here on one, and double again with the other one. You hear it? Single, single, double. Okay, advice. It's an advice that I'm giving to myself to stick to what swings. Less is more. And that brings me to the Cuban style of playing. Very basic, son, maraca. And that goes like this. So now, if I isolate this, it's going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two. This is doing this. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. When you see the viejitos, the old timers playing maracas in Cuba, they usually are very parallel to the floor. They are here. Very, not, not here, like that. So what is this hand doing? One and two and three and four and one and two and four and so get this coordination very slow. Let, um, let, let's just say that I'm gonna say left because I'm kind of going in a rotation here. So I'm gonna go left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Let's try one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. So this maraca is it's got a little de how, de how, right? L loose. So if it's going really fast, you may want to get to this. Lighten up, right? Let, let, let it work. I want to make a point for you to understand that these instruments are the gravy of the turkey. They make or break the band. Don't minimize hand percussion instruments. We call them percusión menor in Spanish, but they're actually percusión mayor, big time. Because if my maraquero or my guido player is not giving me good eighth notes, no matter which instrument I am, on the percussion, playing congas, timbal, or lo que sea, no matter, our groove is gonna have problems. Because it's really, it's really pushing it, pushing it. One of, well, uh, these instruments have monuments in the countries where they belong. It's, you know, people who, who were great guido players that have monuments in small little towns with the instruments on their hands. So 
Don't ever minimize when you see on a bandstand a person playing this instrument, thinking, oh, maybe he didn't know how to play conga or he didn't know how to play anything else. They gave him the maracas. Go and take a look, a close look at it and see everything that they're doing with them and how ingrained is with the rest of the feel of the music. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play loose a little bit and I'm going to change speeds, etc. This is going to probably close the chapter on maracas. Uh, I have these other ones that I want to play for you so you get a little different feel. This is going to be a very different sound. Sometimes these plastic maracas, you know, they were very inexpensive, but also they're fast. And what do I mean they're fast? You know, a little bit narrower. Uh, you know, the, the shape, not all of them are the same shape, of course, but so these instruments are probably as personal as any other instrument. You need to grab a maraca and play, or at least play the one of your best buddy. And if you're gonna buy a generic maraca that is made out of a brand and they make, you know, millions of them in Thailand, of course you can go wrong because they're all gonna be the same. But if you're gonna play a maraca that is coming from a hand manufacturer, you need to take a hold of it. You need to play it. You need to feel it. Right? So, uh, you know, uh, Go online, find one. Uh, don't start with a very expensive one and have fun with it. Learn the basic patterns. Play along with as much as music, as many music as you want. So are you gonna use the maracas on a cha-cha-cha? Well, you can have fun with it and play and follow the beat. But remember that the maracas are not a part of the cha-cha-cha vocabulary because in the cha-cha, you're gonna play the guido, which is the one of the other, the previous video. So uh, understand that these instruments have styles in which they fit. The maraca is more for changui, guajira, son. Especially if you're playing in a conjunto style, for instance, what a conjunto style is, uh, uh, stands for is a band without timbales, where there's going to be only bongo and, and conga. Then the maraca fills up all the high pitch note that is not present there because of the lack of the timbal. So, you know, be aware that not all songs, sometimes songs are too fast for this instrument, and then you're gonna pick up a guido. So, you, 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 you will develop that sense of what songs are for maraca, what songs are for guido, what fits, and, and where. Uh, so, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a, a little jam of maraca. And please, don't forget to visit musicandela.com, which is my website. Send me a message in Facebook at Edgardo Cambon and please keep on tuning to the protection videos of Dance Papi. Gracias, thank you. Mi son, mi son, mi son, para bailar. Mi son, mi son, mi son. Chao. La cura de tu sal más mala que la enfermedad. Ay, 